I'm so happy that this morning we can resume our morning devotion. And this morning's morning devotion is on Romans chapter 15. Yesterday I went to wonderful 611 and I suddenly appeared before them at morning devotion. And uh, we have a chat with all the co-workers, including um, Pastor KW and Pastor Louisa, for seven hours to help them. I'm really thankful that this morning we are reading chapter 15. Chapter 15 talks about the power of the life that is justified by faith. The life that is justified by faith. It's powerful. And what is this power? What is the power of justified by faith? Here it talks about our hope as well. And what is our hope? First thing I want to talk about is it. The book of Romans. The whole book of Romans. And when I read it again, the insights God has given me. Chapter 1 to 11, we know it's the first half. It talks about the doctrine. Especially about justified by faith. The gospel of justified by faith. And this gospel is the power of God. And will save all who believe. First the Jews, then the Gentiles. The gospel is the power of God. So both the Jews and the Gentiles can receive the righteousness of God through faith. For Christ have came and died for us to accomplish this gospel. And from chapter 5 to 8, it talks about life that is justified by faith. It speaks of our hope. And how justified by faith will uh, change our lives. Chapter 5 talks about f uh, hope that is filled with glory. Especially in those chapters. The, and I mentioned that there are two escapes. Firstly, we can escape from the limitations of the law. The other is to leave the law of sin and death. This is me. I'm under sin. But this is my flesh. So my flesh is under the law of sin and it becomes a servant, a slave of sin. So in my conscience, I, I ought to do what is right. I want to do what is right, but I cannot do it. So I, as I struggle, I, s I suffer. Who can save me from this? But praise the Lord through Jesus Christ, who is able to separate This law no longer limits me that I'll be able to leave this and so I'll have freedom. And this is my life. When I talk about this life, not only I myself and maybe able to escape. And not even me, even the whole earth, all creation is waiting for this. Waiting for the sons of God to appear. And that w 
we may be ever escaped. And when the land is cursed because of the sins of men, and when mankind can leave and escape from this sin and death, then the earth may be blessed. For God has placed the earth beneath mankind. Again, I say you have to read the book Homebound Brothers. And with the outline for the second second half of the book and hopefully it will be ready by tomorrow in Chinese New Year or at most at uh, at, uh, anniver- at our church anniversary and may God help us So all creation is waiting for mankind to be to receive freedom, so that they may it may it may receive freedom. This is the change in which our life can bring. And then chapter nine to eleven talks about the Jews. When the earth is redeemed, what about the Israelites? What about God's people? And an Apostle Paul, compelled by the Holy Spirit, say that all of Israel will be saved. But the method is that the Gentiles may enter into fullness. And when they enter, when the Gentiles enter into their fullness, they're not only numbers of the Gentiles, but including the numbers of Gentiles, the Gentiles who are saved, they enter into fullness and abundance, and all of Israel will be saved, and then the Lord Christ will return. This is the doctrine part of the book of Romans. So it's, a, it's a glorious thing to look forward to. Today, we still many of us are living in bondage and the Jews are still living in the bondage of the law but Christ has rescued us from these and so that we may receive freedom the Gentiles do not have this freedom and all who believe including Jews and Gentiles they have this freedom We who have been justified by faith, and because of us, the earth can also escape from the bondage of sin. And in the future, all of Israel will be saved. All the Israel will be saved. They will too will enter into a, a life that is justified by faith. When all this is finished, God, the Lord will return from heaven. This is the glorious hope that the book of Romans have given us. And then we come to chapter 11 to chapter 16, which is the second half. And then from uh, in chapter 12 to chapter 15, today we'll be reading from chapter 15. And these few chapters of the Bible. Well, we understand that justified by faith has so much blessings, and we are blessed. Then how should we ought to live the life that is justified by faith? What is the expression of life that is justified by faith? We have faith, and but we must also have actions. Then what are the actions that are justified? And that's what it's talking about from chapter 13 to chapter 15. Chapter 
chapter 13 and 14 of the HK have talked about it. In chapter 13, it say that the life that is justified by faith is a life that has love and trust. And yesterday's chapter mentioned. The signs, the marking of a church that is justified by faith. I'm actually mentioned that the kingdom of God is not about food or drink, eating or drinking, but by power, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and joy. Here it talks about the problems of the church in in Romans, but also of many church. He's writing to the church of Romans and he wants to visit them. And what the church faces is the problem between Jewish believers and Gentile believers. Gentile believers and Jewish believers. The Je Jewish believers do not eat pork. Everything will have to be culture food. They have their Jewish laws, whom they've kept since their youth. In the Bible, there's the holy law, and so they follow the rabbi in keeping it. But as Chinese, you know, we know as Gentiles, we not only eat pork, but we even eat the blood of the pig. Not only eat the blood of the pig. No, we think that you know the the even the the intestines of the pig, and we eat, we eat. We will eat as well. If you eat these things, raise your hand. And it's delicious, and we we think it's delicious. But now that we've come to Christ, then we will not eat pork blood anymore. But Taiwanese, they especially like to eat pig intestines, and that smell it. It smells like home. Then what should we do? Jewish believers say that you you not you ought not to eat this. And Gentiles believers are like, why is your faith so weak? When you've come to believe in Jesus, you everything is sorted out. You have already escaped from the. covenant of the Old Testament of the law you've wasted the pig intestines it tastes so good but the Jewish believers believe think that when you eat these things I will not even touch you I can't even shake your hand for you are unclean So Peter can't dine with the Gentiles. There's this kind of problem, and in the church, people will say that I can dine with you, but I cannot dine with you. I can be closer to you, but not to you, and this become a problem for the church. So the apostle Paul has to say that the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking. But it is about righteousness. The righteousness that is justified by faith. That is the righteousness of God. Peace. Peace that we have fellowship. That we join together. That we can be united. To become one body. That we one Lord. One God. One hope. One life. That we are together. And we're not separated. And the joy in the Holy Spirit. The joy that is the Holy, the joy given to us by the Holy Spirit. We are we have joy because there's great hope. 
that we can escape from these limitations. So as Gentiles, Gentile believers have to accept the Jewish believers. Do not debate about these things. We are all justified by faith. How they want to eat, let them be. This is what chapter 14 talks about. It's really precious. It actually helps churches nowadays. Do not argue with others on what's in the, on the surface or what or certain actions. In these matters, we ought to accept. What is the mark of the church? It's not what you can eat or what you cannot eat. Or, or nor any colors. The mark of the church is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's a community filled by the Holy Spirit, a community that is justified by faith, that are united in one heart, that are of one mind. And we are, have, we are same-minded. That we see ourselves as a sinner, a sinner that has been saved. And we need God's grace. How can we look at ourselves? Depends on the gifts God has given us. And look at ourselves appropriately. So it's sound-minded when you look at yourself. To accept ourselves like so. However way God has made you, you ought to accept. And through its gift and being, you operate to have the effect of a united being. And this is the mark of a church that is filled by the Holy Spirit. And today we come to chapter 15. The power of the life that is justified by faith. We are a community that is justified by faith. We pursue the joy of the Holy Spirit, the righteousness of God and peace. What is said here is a follow on, follows from what is said on chapter 15. What is the power of the life that is justified by faith? I separate this into two paragraphs. First, uh, first paragraph is chap uh, verse 1 to 13. In the hope of justified by faith, accept and bear all people. Towards all people, we are to, to accept and bear. And of course, here says everyone means all the believers. We are a community of believers. There are Jews and Gentiles, people of different languages and ethnicity. We are all justified by faith. So in the community of people who are justified by faith, in the community of the church, we are to bear and to accept. So th those who are strong ought to bear the fall, the failings of the weak, to bear and accept. That is the power of our life.
Only with life that is justified by faith, then you have the power to accept and bear them. Let us enter into the scripture. We who are strong ought to bear the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. We think we are strong. We think we can eat pork intestines. Then we ought to bear the, the failings of the weak. If they don't eat, that's fine. And not to please ourselves. We are to bear. In the original text, bear means to, to lift. So we who have power, we are to lift those who have no power. Don't be that we, we are strong, we have strength, and we only please ourselves. To please ourselves. In the original text, the roots of the word please also means to lift up. Is that my, my, my leg? Is that my... Uh, my foot have to stand firm that uh, that I am happy I, I'm lifting up myself so the strong do not use your strength to please ourselves what, uh, whatever wh whatever I do uh, pleases me then I'll do it it's not like that instead we ought to bear Each of us should please our neighbors for their good to build them up. We are not to please ourselves. I'm not seeking to build up myself, but to build them up. To lift them up so that their life might benefit, and to build them up. Why should we do this? For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. We have faith and power. We ought to seek the pleasures of others, not to please ourselves. Even Christ like this is just like this. For it says that for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. God wants to give us hope. So he has written the scripture for us. So with the word of God, we may receive endurance and encouragement. And through endurance and encouragement, we have hope. We, we do not seek out to please ourselves. But, but when we bear, we will receive endurance and encouragement. And when we accept and bear others, then I will have endurance because I have the Word of God in me. The Word of God, the Bible will, will teach, will give me power to endure and I will receive encouragement. And in which hope comes forth that I can do this. This is my power. This is the power of my life. It's the Word of God in my life that is helping me. And it's also a life that is justified by faith. And that's the same with Christ Jesus. 
That's why it says in chapter 5. In verse 5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had. So that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement. God has given us His word so that we may have endurance and encouragement. And God is a God who gives endurance and encouragement. So that we may be same-minded. Then we can be of one mind. Because what we think about is the word of God. What we accept our life that is given to us by God. What is Paul talking about? It's, he's talking about hope. To, that he may receive hope. To be like Christ. We learn to be like Christ. What is Christ like? Christ is not, is not self-seeking. He humbles himself. He bears our weaknesses. So when we follow Christ, we follow His forbearance, that He has bare the sins of the whole world for the glory of God. So you have to accept one another just like Christ has accepted you so that glory may be to God. We must accept one another. That's just how Christ has accepted us. And continue in verse 8. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews and on behalf of God's truth, so that the promise that has been made to the patriarchs may be confirmed. Christ accepts everyone. Christ has become a servant of the Jews, those who have been circumcised and accomplished salvation. And on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs may become confirmed. And moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy. We go to verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may be overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God who give us hope, God is give us a, God give us hope. He give us endurance and encouragement to us. And fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in Him. The God of hope, the God who give us hope, fill us with joy and peace. So joy and peace continue to fill us in hope. In the original text, it's fill you with all joy and peace in hope. In the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Chinese Union version, we've broken it up. And it's a, in hope in the end. So we are a bit confused. Actually, it's the God who has given us peace. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. And this is our mind. 
that in our mind is filled with joy and peace. And in hope, and I love to say into joy and peace fill us inside. So the believing that is us into hope, so that we may have hope. The God of hope in me does this is work so that I may have joy and peace. He wants us to work in Him. This hope is in the power of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, what kind of hope is this? When I begin, So they talk about the Jews are under the law and everyone is under the law, under sin and death. But Christ, through his sacrifice, have set us free from these law. So that we can enter into the glory of freedom and we become children of God. And we are no longer slaves to sin. Instead, we are slaves to righteousness. We are children of God. And the Holy Spirit testified to us that we are children of God. And so we have this power of life. Not only that, even the earth and all creation through us may receive freedom. And I hope that, I too hope that, that the Jewish believers and the Jews all of Israel, one day will be saved. In such a glorious picture, this is hope. And all this hope began, it's in the work of God. And God has given us peace, joy and comfort that you may enter into this hope. This is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when God has, Jesus has redeemed us and we have the life that is justified by faith and today through the power of the Holy Spirit we may escape from sin and death, escape from the law of the Old Testament and we embrace the earth and the earth through us may be changed. And we hope that all Israel will be saved. And today God keep on leading us into fullness. And God works in us. The power of the Holy Spirit works in us. This is the power of our life. It's our hope. Brother and sister, simply put, plainly put, I I came to Christ at the age of 20. I've been a believer for 47 years. And I began to be a pastor. I came, I came to be a pastor at the age of 36. And I began to minister to God full time. Now before I was filled by the Holy Spirit. You want me to preach on the love of God? I cannot. You want me to preach on hope? I cannot. I ask you, if you come from other churches, and if you listen to messages from other churches, have you ever heard messages that are filled with hope? I haven't. Nor have I preached. It. I cannot preach it. And today, and for the, in the, especially the recent years, when I see the earth revive beneath us, we see the power of our life. We see how the Spirit of God operates on us. 
and I began to feel what this hope is about. Then I'll be able to share what I've shared with you just then. And what I share with you is not just from the base of knowledge. Now to understand this is not easy. It's quite impossible. In the past, we often say justified or sanctified by our status. When you have come to Christ, you were sanctified through your status. But sanctified in life, it's impossible. So sanctification needs work. Even to the point of death that you may receive it. It's only when your earthly body die, and then you can separate from this dress of sin. Rather we've ignored that Christ has set us free. We've only read half of the book of Romans. We haven't, we haven't come to chapter 8 or chapter 7 that we cannot escape it. Not only that. And we cannot come to chapter 15. So it's very hard to talk about submission and love and to submit to those who are in authority. That's hard. But with the Holy Spirit. And when we really hold on to the life Christ has given to us, life that is justified by faith, we have, we have great hope and we have great power. Here I want to express this through a picture. The power of life that is justified by faith. I am strong. And then it's Pastor Anna. Let's give a round of applause for, for Pastor Anna. She's very slim now, isn't it? Isn't she? So, the strong will lift up the one who's slim. And you pick her up. We'll ask Pastor Jason. Pastor Jason can, can lift her up easier. That the strong will lift up, it will bear the the slim. S. We should take a photo. It's impossible that the weak, to, for the weak to bear the strong, if you're trying to lift him. It's impossible. You understand? This is what chapter 15 talks about. The life that is justified by faith is strong. And it can bear, it can lift the weak and not the strong. Why sh Say, why should I help you? I can handle myself. I can enjoy myself. Isn't it? No. That you're not seeking to please ourselves. And that's what Christ is. Again, we'll do it again. Christ came to earth to bear us. And you will lift up your church. The Christ will lift up your church. Will lift up your body. You are the head. You are the head and she is the body. And you'll lift her up. And you'll put her down. To bear her, it means to lift her, to lift her up, to lift up, to lift up. Take to yourself. Lift up is to bear. Lift up is to bear. So, bear the weaknesses of others. That is to lift them up and bring to yourself its acceptance. Let's do that again. Lift up. 
lift up and take to himself. This is how Christ have accepted us. She is not standing by herself. She's standing by Christ. Let's give Pastor Jason a round of applause. Pastor Jason has done a great job. And we have to say, Christ is so very good. Christ is great. And He has lifted us up. Brothers and sisters. Do not judge or debate about matters of the weakness of faith. Why can't you lift me up? God has created me and you. Why has God created you so weak? You can't do this, cannot do that. See, I can do it. Do not debate about these things. Lift up, we'll bear them and take to ourselves. That is accepted. That is what Christ has done. And this is the same way of what Paul has done. Verse 14 to 33. That is the second half. The Apostle Paul. Bear and accept all people. Whether they are Jews or Gentiles. As long as they believe in Jesus. Paul will bear them and accept them. From verse 14. Due to time, I will not read through all of it. Because it, they are quite direct. Paul said that I myself am convinced my brothers and sisters that you yourselves are full of goodness and filled with knowledge and competent to instruct on others he is a servant of Christ he is a minister of Christ to the Gentiles So they may offer the Gentiles to God that they may be accepted by God. So what he's saying is he accepts and bear the Gentiles. And from verse 20, he talks about his journey. He planned to go to Rome but has been hindered from coming to them. He, but he believes he will go. And when he goes to Rome, he will go further and go to Spain. And there's nothing got to do is to go to Jerusalem to bring the contribution to the poor that the Gentiles have given to the community of Jerusalem. So now he's going to Jerusalem. And after going to Jerusalem, then I will come to Rome. Spend some time with you to enjoy your company and then go to Spain. What is that? What is it going to do to evangelize, to preach the gospel, to do what God wants him to do, to accomplish the will of God, to bring the gospel to places where it has not been reached? He is willing to bear the needs of everyone. We have the gospel. You have not yet received the gospel. So, 
I will go. I will go to you. I do not seek to please ourselves, but I seek to please God, and so that your may your life may be built up, and to bear the needs of those who have not who does not have the gospel, and to offer himself. And they are, are pr- the church to pray for him, so that the will of God may accomplish. And in conclude this chapter, the life of Paul. Because he bear and accept the needs of the Gentiles, he it, he have to bear that the Jews try to take his life. And right now, the Apostle Paul is being pursued by the Jews who are trying to s- seek his life, to take his life, and they pursue him to Jerusalem. Always willing, he is not to please himself. This is the power of Paul's life. He does what God wants him to do. Brothers and sisters, today, you know your life is filled with power. This power is not that we can what we can do. The power is that we have such great hope. It's God who given us this hope. It's the power that can that we may be set free from the bondage of the Old Testament, from the law and death. This power allow us to bear and accept. Others, I have faith, so I can help those who uh, who does not have faith. I have the gospel, so I can help those without the gospel. I can bear the the needs of others, and to lift them lift them up. To lift them up, to bear them, and bring to myself to accept them and to love them. So the life are being built, and together with us, they may glorify God. We lead all people and we lead all creation to enter into this glorious freedom. That is the hope. Of justified by faith that God has given us, to us, and this hope is not of the future, but in the present, that we can accomplish. Amen. I bless you all.